Live from Union Square in the heart of San Francisco. It's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit 2016. Brought to you by Databricks and IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Walls and George Gilbert. And welcome back to the Spark Summit 2016 here on theCUBE, along with George Gilbert. I'm John Walls, and we're now joined by Ashley Stirrup, who's the CMO of Talent, which is an open source data integration company. And uh, Ashley, we certainly appreciate the time here. Thanks for taking time out of what's a pretty busy day for you, I know, here yes. at the summit. Uh, first off, impression about what you've seen, what you've heard, uh, what's happening here with regard to Spark and what's going on in that community. Yeah, well, I have to say, it's just such an exciting time in the data industry. I mean, what you're able to do with Spark and Hadoop and machine learning to be able to take information and turn it into new insight, better experiences for customers, recommendations on new products, what have you. It's, it's really exciting time. Uh, you were out the keynote today, we're talking about 2.0, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the new release coming up here. Just your take on some of the changes, talking about uh, structured streaming, structured APIs, a few yeah. other improvements as That's well. That's right, yeah, yeah. Well, first off, let me just say that Talon's been a huge supporter of Spark for a long time now. We've been working very closely with Databricks we were one of the first integration vendors to uh, announce native support for Spark so that you can build your data integration flows. They generate native Spark that runs on top of Hadoop mm -hmm. and immediately got customers 5x better performance, allowed them to do things in real time, one design environment for batch and real time. Uh, so we've really gone all in on Spark and it's provided a lot of value to our customers. Yeah, and, and so what is it about that? I mean, I. I Mm -hmm. Here a lot easier, faster, simpler. You know, that yes. those are kind of this overarching mantra mm -hmm. being in the people's head. Yeah. But the fact that you, you talk about all these various sources of data yeah. and that continue to grow by exponential volume. Yeah. So, I mean, what is it that, that you then, that you see as this glue or, or, or whatever it might be that's allowing yeah. you to broaden your services to your clients then? Right, well first off, let me just say that, you know, if you look traditionally uh, at the world, uh, being able to do machine learning, data science, big data, has really been the domain of the largest e-commerce web type companies, a Facebook and Amazon, Netflix, someone like that. And so with the advent of Spark and leveraging things like machine learning, and now with Talend, we're opening it up, we're making it possible for any organization without that large team of data scientists mm -hmm to go capture all that information, apply machine learning to it, and apply it in, in real business use cases. Mm -hmm. And so, what we're doing is we're making Hadoop and Spark much more accessible to any Java developer. They don't need to be an expert in Spark or in MapReduce or what have you, and they can immediately start building intelligent data integration flows. Um, we've always, we'll, we'll always hear from the beginning of time till the end of the time, mm -hmm. the difference between you know, choice and integration or simplicity. Um, where do you come out on that spectrum? And, and where would you position some of the other, un, other vendors? Newer entrants or some of the old standbys? Right, um, well, you know, I don't want to uh, talk ill of the competition, things like that. So, I mean, what I'll, I'll really focus on is that, you know, from our perspective, what we're doing is we're allowing customers to build these uh, you know, data integration flows, do all their design work, and do it in a way that's future-proof or platform agnostic. Because the market is moving so fast that you know, just two years ago, MapReduce was the standard, and now Spark is the standard, and you know, people talk about Flink or what have you, a lot of other technologies as other potential options. And we want to give customers the option of leveraging all that technology and doing it in a native way, but that's portable, so they can go from one environment to another. Okay. Um, so, regardless of whether it's Talon or mm -hmm. the old guard or the new guard, yeah. what are the elements of the workflow? Mm -hmm. What did we need in the data warehouse world yeah. to, to do our you know, business intelligence? And what do we need now in the world of the of the data lake, the functions, yeah. you know, to enable all the, to democratize access to data science. Right, right. I mean, well, well what I'd say is, uh, obviously, connectivity is important. You've got data in so many different formats that needs to get uh, brought together. And then you need to put it into a format that's usable for people. And so what we're really focused at Talent is, 
how do we enable the entire organization to leverage that data? So we want to make sure we're solving the data integration, serving the data integration developer, allowing them to handle all that kind of plumbing of where do I get the data from and how do I bring it all together, access different APIs. Give tools for the data scientists, so once they've built their machine learning model, how do I put it into production and let IT manage the fact I want to keep it up, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time. So, so the product line would include something to help the data scientists do the modeling. Yeah, so we're not a machine learning company, yeah. but we're helping our customers put those machine learning algorithms, once they're built, how do you put them into production? So how you would take the model and something like a, a, um, a standard like PMML that would say, take it from a des model design tool and put it into production. That's essentially right, yeah. Okay. So I mean, basically, uh, you, know, you would have a data scientist, let's say it's build a, a recommendation engine. Somebody puts something into their shopping cart, what are the next things you offer them? And they would build that model, and then how do you make sure you've deployed that in real time so you're capturing real time streaming data of web clicks, and making the right recommendation, and then putting the right products actually in front of the customer. And so we're automating that intelligent data flow. Okay. And then um, we hear now it's still a little leading edge, mm -hmm. but the idea that people want to keep learning, you know, continuously, like fraud. Yes. You know, the patterns are always changing. So you've got almost like two flows. One is the keep uh, the model from drifting by keeping up with the new fraud patterns. Right. And then the other is put that new model back into production at some, you know, frequent inter interval. Yeah. Is that a is that a workflow that you can accommodate now, or is that something that's not really mainstream for a while? Yeah, no, I mean, that's something, that's actually a real differentiator for Talon. Um, uh, we call it continuous integration, data integration, continuous okay. data integration, and okay. so we're allowing our customers to uh, basically, um, each developer to be checking in their pieces of the data integration flow, or, or what have you, a new uh, machine learning algorithm, uh, put in automated testing and allow people to uh, basically be continuously checking in new code that allows them to much more rapidly get new versions of their you know, data integration models out and deployed across large teams. But when you say data integration models, yep. are you distinguishing the essentially the transformation logic as opposed to the Predictive modeling? Yeah, I'm actually including the whole thing. Okay. So both the data modeling access movement as well as the machine learning algorithms okay, themselves. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, because we're talking about data, um, I mean, in all forms, you know, structured, mm -hmm. unstructured streaming, um, yeah. and all sources. So I think yeah. about the Internet of Things, and I think about all of a sudden, you know, your clients yes. have this whole new world opening up to them, right, and, and voluminous That's right. in some respects. Yeah. I mean, well, how's that impacting? your business and, and what kind of abilities and capabilities do you now have via Spark yeah. to make that a little more usable, if that's you will, right. to your yeah. clients? Yeah, well that's, that's a, a great question. I mean, no, no question. Uh, you know, when I actually talk to our customers, we hear, when, when they talk about Internet of Things, what they often mean is new data sources. So it could be sensor data or something that's Truly yeah, it might be a wearable, things. might be right. uh, in the soil, might yeah. be wherever. But there's just so much data, you know, whether it's social or web traffic or server logs or what have you. Right. And all of that data, each of those data sources provides new opportunities mm -hmm. uh, to create insight, create a better customer experience, deliver a new product. Uh, and we're actually providing a lot of those capabilities to pull all that together. So we see a lot of those types of projects going on in the cloud. And so working with Amazon Kinesis or Kafka uh, for your streaming and then of course um, for ingestion and then using Spark Streaming uh, for the data transformation and then machine learning on top of that. And so we're allowing our customers to wire all these things together and not only handle these new real-time data sources but combine traditional data, you know, historical data I should mm -hmm. say, with that new real-time streaming. So you've got both the historical information and the, mm -hmm. the new real-time, you've got one environment that you're managing all and that. And Allison, you give it a whole new relevance, a whole That's new right. context. It yeah, allows exactly. them to evaluate that real-time data now based against yeah. 10 years, 20 years, whatever they might have. That's right, and, and the more you can do in real-time, 
the more value you're getting out of your data. I right. mean, data, the value of data decays Solve so Solve problems, quickly. avoid problems, yeah. all you those You can do things. something in the moment with a customer, it's 10 times more powerful than well, if you're following up afterwards. Yeah, what exactly. about, I mean, I mean, so, I mean, give me an example, if you will, maybe, uh, I, think you, I think you mentioned soil. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean what's, you, who are you working with in that regard that, that maybe they're doing something that they haven't yeah. been able to do before That's because right. you're leveraging this? Yeah, well, we're working with a, a customer of ours called Spring, they're out of the Netherlands, and they're helping small farmers around the world, Africa is a big focus for them, by giving them better recommendations on what to plant and what fertilizer to use, and it can have as much as a 5x improvement in the amount of crop that they're producing, and that makes the difference between them going hungry or not, them being able to send their children to school. And so what they're doing is they're replacing the old model of a chemistry-based model where you had to mail samples off and wait weeks to get recommendations, and they were expensive, to having somebody in a small truck with a small device they can plug into the soil, uh, get, take, use sensors to get readings, pass that in real time back to the data center, get a recommendation back, and give that farmer the information they need at a far lower cost and far faster. And, and I, I'm curious, like what period of time? Do you have any idea how, how quickly that transaction yeah, in knowledge minutes. occurred? In minutes. minutes, yeah. So before, what might have taken a month from, a month. from the, yeah. the hinterlands, if you That's will, right. yeah. uh, 30 days of blight or disease or or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever environmental condition wreaked have it, yeah. you're able to avoid that problem, if you will, in, in right. a matter of minutes and adjust yeah. your patterns. And it has real impact on real people. So yeah, that's absolutely. what's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned something that, that I, that I want to key off, that real time changes so much. Yeah. What happens, what did the pipeline look like? I mean, we have a broad sense, but I want right. to hear your words. For yeah. the pipeline in the traditional world, yes. data, you know, operational database, data warehouse, right. to the real-time world. What, what, what's, yeah, well, what I mean, in, in most cases, you're doing something fundamentally different. So you're, uh, in the traditional, when you're not doing things in real-time, you're doing your best to profile customers based on either historical information or behind, you know, with a much smaller set of data in a much less tailored way in real-time. For uh, more, and it's so a you're, sample and stale sample. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're, 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 you're not nearly as able to do fine grain recommendations. So you're, think of it as, I'm going to offer all males between 40 and 50, you know, the sporting goods option, right? Versus knowing in real time, well, they're looking at golf, so I'm going to talk to them about yeah. this new golf ball that came out, right? And it's, you're able to be much more targeted and provide a much better experience. And, and just, to satisfy my, my mm -hmm. curiosity, yeah. the, what's that topology look like? Right. So what are the products that a customer has to buy to do that? Right, right. Well, you know, it, it is a huge range of, of potential options. So, I mean, what I can tell you is that if you look at our customer base over time, what they were doing was a lot of uh, bulk and, and batch analytics. They were still using statistical models like SAS to do segmentations and target offers but they just weren't able to take, care, take advantage of that detailed level information. And so now there's a whole new crop, uh, and I'm not an expert on the particular ones that are out, there's a whole cr uh, crop of uh, real-time recommendation engines that, that customers are able to leverage, and we're helping to, to work with all those, connect the data, both the historical data and the real-time data, so that they can make those recommendations and then deliver them back to the customer. Okay. So historically, they know George. And I lose a lot of golf balls, <laughs> and in real time, I need to replace them. That's right. That's the history. Yeah. Right. Ashley, How thanks valuable for, would that be? Yeah, I would love that, actually, mm -hmm. because that's a perpetual problem of Yeah, mine. you have yeah. the FedEx guy pull up right next to you at the you golf know, course. I played yeah. three rounds. By now, you've exhausted your, your dozen. So uh, That's right. Ashley, yeah. thanks for being with us. All right, thank we you. We appreciate the time, and best of luck with Talon going forward here. Thank you. My pleasure. You bet. We continue with our coverage here from the Spark Summit 2016 on theCUBE right after this.